Okay, so I apologize, but for some reason there seems to be a bird, like a quail or something, living in my chimney, <laughs> and my desk is right next to the fireplace. So I keep on like hearing like a coo sound in the background. If you hear it, <laughs> I, I don't know what to do about it. I don't know if there's like a way to get rid of birds. Like it's a thing and uh, I'm just dealing with it right now. Life is tough. No, <laughs> it's, it's okay. Anyways, welcome back to Let's Build the Ultimate Theme Park, guys. My name is Tyler Cedarwall, also known as Attacking Toucans, also known as Laura Ingalls Wilder. And today we're going to start off the episode by building a new coaster, which is always the most exciting way to start a new episode. And the type of coaster we're going to be designing today is known as the Infinity Coaster, which is designed by a company named Gerslauer, which is a little bit hard to pronounce. <laughs> it's a variant of a popular roller coaster model known as the Eurofighter. It is known for having vertical chain lifts and having first drops that go beyond 90 degrees. In fact, I think I might have mentioned this roller coaster in a previous episode, but at the American Dream Meadowland Shopping Center Complex, Gerslauer just put in a new Eurofighter model coaster into that mall and it has the steepest drop in the world with a vertical drop of 121.5 degrees and I think it took the record by just 0.5 degrees which is just kind of shady right at the same time I mean hey it's gotta the envelope has got to be pushed somehow and even if it's pushed by 0.5 degrees at a time I'm all here for it so one of the reasons I wanted to put this coaster in this park is because one of my favorite coasters I've ridden recently at Knott's Berry Farm which is the theme park that I got a season pass to this year is called Hang Time, and it's also an infinity coaster, and it is very similar to this one. In fact, the very first element I put after the first drop is based off of the first element off of Hang Time, where you go up a hill while turning, and then you dive back down into like a weird loop that corkscrews out. I thought it was a really fun and interesting thing to do on a coaster, so I wanted to recreate it and also just make it bigger because Hang Time is only 150 feet tall, and this coaster is around 230 feet tall. And I thought this was the tallest Infinity or Eurofighter coaster out there. I thought I was like breaking a record virtually, of course. But then after doing a little bit more research, I found out there's one more Infinity coaster that is a little bit taller than this. At 240 feet, there's an Infinity coaster at Hansa Park in northern Germany called Der Schwer des Karnan which is really hard to pronounce, but it's an infinity coaster that looks freaking insane. And this thing is apparently just like crazy to ride. And it's 240 feet tall, like I said. And the craziest thing about this coaster is the vertical chain lift is inside a really big building. And when you get to the very top of the chain lift, you like sit there for like 30 seconds. And then it like drops you back down the chain lift, almost like a free fall. And if you don't know about it, it's like supposed to be like the most terrifying thing ever. And then you go back up the chain lift and go through the coaster. It's like one of the craziest coaster elements I've ever heard of my life. So this coaster came together quite quickly, so now we're just gonna go ahead and give it a ride. So we start off with our ascent, which I'm also gonna put this inside a building, and I'm gonna make it look a lot cooler. It's not gonna fall backwards, but this is gonna go down the really, really large first drop, which is gonna be even larger because it goes underground. Um, I need to smooth this loop out. It's still very, very janky. I'll, I'll work on it, but you kind of probably get the, the general idea of what I'm going for right there. Just got to implement it better. Got a big airtime hill right there, which leads to a half loop into a corkscrew. Go over into like a overbank that goes upside down a little bit. And you get pushed by a booster into what's called a demonic knot, which just sounds terrifying. <laughs> I love it. Then you go into a cobra roll, which puts you into like a 180 degree turn then you hit some more boosters which sends you over the ferris wheel so there's the double inception loop and then we have a coaster that goes over it and then we get a few more boosters that take you into this gigantic figure eight which i think is a really cool thing that they have in the game i just really wanted to do some really cool coaster elements on this coaster that i haven't been able to use yet in the park and so i'd pretty much got to do all of those on this coaster and then it ends up with this thing called i think it's a banana curve or something like that i'll have to look it up later but it's a really it's another really just like interesting way to turn and this coaster is pretty long overall later we'll go through and like look at the individual stats i'm gonna have like a video in the future where we go over every single coaster look at the stats look at the g-force and just like look have an in-depth look at everything about it and just like talk more about them because now that i know like more about coasters we can like have some more detailed analyses over the coasters that have been built. 
And then, of course, we are going to be connecting this up to our little Poke Park area. This is going to be, I believe, the last Pokemon themed ride, unless I decide to add like one more thrill ride next episode, which I might. You guys will have to wait until next episode to see what I decide to do. And then also, I want to start getting close to another park tour video. But before we do that, I have created another checklist of things that I want to finish before we do said park tour video. But we'll get into that checklist in a little bit because I want to talk about this coaster and the theming a little bit more first. So like I said, it's going to be connected to the Poke Park area. It's going to be the third coaster. Uh, second, I guess technically we have the two RMC coasters, but they're they're racing, but that's that counts as two coasters And then we also have the Pokemon snap ride that starts underground. So we have this coaster, which is the infinity And I decided to theme it after the building in the Galar region in the town of Wyndham And I'm pretty sure it's the stadium So I guess we'll have two stadiums in this area, but I feel like the stadium Looks different and it's not gonna actually have a stadium inside of it I just like the architecture and it kind of reminds, reminds me of the Seattle Space Needle, but like cooler But I want to make the chain lift go up the inside of a building that looks like this And I'll have like a blue spiral that goes on the outside that I'll use one of the pieces in the game to create And I think it'll look really cool, so I'm pretty pumped I've never actually played up to that point of the game where you go inside that building So I don't know much about it, but by the time I'm like finished decorating it I'll probably get to that point of the game, so here's hoping and then I also talked about what I wanted to name this ride last episode, I think. And that name is Mewtwo's Wrath, or like Mewtwo's Revenge, something along the lines of that. And I'm going to color it purple, or like the lavender, the color of Mewtwo. And it's just going to look like a spiraling mass of just like angry roller coaster tracks, because this thing is spiraling everywhere. And that's the reason I like put these boosters and like really tall elements on it. It's because I just wanted like this coaster to just freaking stand out and be really crazy. <laughs> now the biggest difference between the two coaster models by Gerslauer that I mentioned, the Eurofighter and the Infinity Coaster, the big difference between the two of those, because they both have like those vertical chain lifts and beyond vertical drops, uh, the biggest difference is the fact that Infinity Coasters, which is the type we're using, have a higher capacity so the trains are able to be bigger the Eurofighter coasters are similar to this but they usually are more compact and have smaller trains they're typically used as smaller coasters aren't as scary and are also used in like indoor theme parks more often but they're still both really fun coaster types but one is just meant to have like higher capacities and stuff and then like I said Gerslauer put the element on that coaster in Germany which is called the Oath to Karnen that's the the English interpretation of it where it just like makes you fall back, free fall on the chain lift, and it makes you think that the coaster's like broken and malfunctioning. Like that's just like a dick move. Come on, like that's just freaking crazy that they do that to you. It's wild, but at the same time, I love I live for it. Like it's the it's the best troll. It makes me wonder if we ever get Planet Coaster two, if Planet Coaster will kind of update their coasters and add like all these new elements that all the new coaster manufacturers are coming up with. One of the biggest coaster manufacturers, known as Entman, has mainly been making coasters in Europe for a while now because they kind of lost popularity in America, but they've gotten way better, and it seems like they're going to be like kind of making a return with a coaster named the Pantheon, which is the building in Bush Gardens. And it has this feature where it actually switches tracks, like the track moves, which is pretty interesting. It's kind of similar to a railroad, I guess, which is like how trains would like make turns and stuff and how they would like switch back and forth but they're like doing that in roller coasters which I would love to see in Planet Coaster. Think of the possibilities that could be done if they added those types of features to the game. Holy crap. But what it does is you go onto this piece and it's forward. It boosts you up this this top hat but, but you don't go all the way up. You actually fall back down you go backwards and the track behind you switches to where you just go back up another just like vertical piece and then you go back forwards again and it boosts you over the top hat this time and you continue doing the coaster. So like elongates the length of the coaster without actually having to spend as much money. It's pretty cool. And then at Universal Studios in Florida, they just put a new ride in the Harry Potter section called Hagrid's Magical Creature Motorbike Adventure. And it's one of the most expensive roller coasters ever built in the whole entire world, I think. I'll look it up. Oh my gosh, it costs $300 million. Yeah, they put in work. Apparently it's like one of the best coasters ever, it has like great theming, and it has an element that's been used on a few other coasters around the world, but it's still kind of new, and it's called the Vertical Drop Track, which the coaster just like stops on a certain piece, and the, co and the track just like lowers like an elevator to a different portion of track, and then the coaster like starts back up again, so it just requires the track pieces to line up. So I think those would be some really cool elements to add to a future Planet Coaster game. And like I said, there's a lot of new elements. And like there's a lot of pre-made elements in Planet Coaster as well. Like the loops and the corkscrews and stuff. 
but there's a lot of new elements that have come out in the past few years, especially out of like RMC and a couple other coaster manufacturers that have been, that have been kind of like visionaries. Like the Zero-G stall, that would be another great element to add to like the pre-made elements. If they ever make a new game, I would love to see more features like that. Another cool thing I'd love to see is more like coaster train variants. Uh, I've heard of a really cool coaster train, I forgot what coaster it's on, but on the back of every train, there would be four seats that faced backwards instead of forwards. <laughs> I thought that'd be kind of cool to have as an option in this game. And then also, Thunderation at Silver Dollar City. Previously, like every three seats in that coaster train would have a seat that faced backwards. But then I think like some lady hurt her neck because like she wasn't able to like brace for a certain turn or something and like kind of threw her neck out and they had to get rid of it I think for like legal reasons which is really dumb people are always like ruining crap but I still think that's really cool and I would love to see like kind of variations like that added to the game just for the heck of it because why not why not just give you even more options even though this game already gives you so many I just want to see this game progress obviously and see the simulation get even better. Now real quick, I want to talk about a sponsor, and the sponsor is myself! Yeah, I'm sponsoring myself this video. Um, just want to talk about something that I'm doing. I've mentioned it a couple other times on the series, but I just started a video game convention called Versus Expo. We had our first year last year back in April in Chicago, and it was awesome. Everything went amazingly, and this year I am trying to grow and make it even better. So I have the hotel booked, and the event is going to be from July 10th through 12th. It's still going to be at the same place in Chicago O'Hare. Um, which I chose that because it's a very good like centralized location in the Midwest and it's like equidistant for people to travel to It's like the easiest overall I'd say and I'm also from the Midwest So I'm just trying to like kind of stay true to my Midwest roots I guess I'm gonna pre-sell the tickets on Indiegogo to raise money for the event Beforehand I want to ask this before I make the event go live But if you've been like enjoying my videos and you have the ability to um, whenever I launch my Indiegogo, if you can give it any support, either by sharing it or by donating like five, ten, twenty dollars or whatnot towards my event to help me like reach my goals and create this charity gaming event, that would be awesome. Um, I really want to like make a really large impact with this Indiegogo fundraiser and raise a lot of money to be able to create a really awesome event and do lots of awesome things in the upcoming years. So once I start doing that, if you have the financial ability to support. Um, please help me just like launch that and make it just like go off with the bang. I think that would be really really awesome uh, This is my second time ever asking for money for anything the first time was like back in 2015 where I rose um, I asked for a thousand dollars to raise money for an album I made called game face and I ended up doing that I followed through and this is gonna be the second time I've asked for money and I'm raising it to make my charity g competitive gaming event even better <laughs> I did the first one out of pocket and unfortunately I do not have the finances to do it again out of pocket so so yeah, once that's live, if you're able to, I would appreciate the support. Thanks. And also, if you're interested in going to the expo, you can find more info at versusexpo.tv. Link down in the description. Anyways, now that I got that out of the way, I want to talk about my checklist of things I want to finish before we do the next park tour video. So there isn't a whole lot to do, but I think the things I would need to finish will take around two, maybe three videos, kind of depending. So here's the list. The first thing we got to do is we got to finish decorating the coaster in the city, the one that's going to be Spider-Man themed, or maybe not, I don't know, maybe I won't do Spider-Man themed yet, I might make it just his own themed, because I don't have very many good like Spider-Man things, and I still haven't watched the new Spider-Man movies, I know that's kind of like disappointing, but I'll figure it out, I need to just like kind of sit down and just like focus on that and just like work on it and get it done. The second thing is I need to finish the Pokemon Snap Ride, which I would say that's about probably like 50% done, yeah, that's going to take another full episode just by itself to finish. Then we gotta finish decorating the Poke Park, which is what we're working on right now. And we're gonna get a lot done on the rest of this episode. It looks really good by the end of the episode, so stay tuned. You're gonna see some banging scenery. Four, we gotta finish the Egyptian scenery for those other few coasters that we have back tucked in the corner of the park. Uh, there's not too much to do there, honestly. Just gotta finish the stations, pretty much, and like the little food court that I looked at at the beginning fly-through shot of the video. Um, five is we gotta decorate around that new roller coaster that we built by the parking lot, the one that goes back and forth. There's not a whole lot to do, but I just need to kind of like tie it in, make it look finished. That and that'll make the whole entrance of the park, I think, completely finished, and that'll be freaking awesome. And then that's it. We just have those five things to do, and none of them should take too long. Now we're not gonna do it necessarily in the order that I just said them, but we will get them done and. Once that's done, I'll make another park tour update, and that'll probably be around like episode 73, I bet. And on that park tour video, I also want to go through and add those like toucan animatronics everywhere and just add like 
a hundred different little toucans around the whole entire park. I think that'd be kind of like a cute little Easter egg for the guests to like look out for. And then if the park was real, maybe there could be some like iPhone app integration that allows the people to take pictures of the animatronic toucans. And if they can somehow take a picture of all of them, then they'll get like some sort of prize. Maybe they can like turn it in for like some sort of food or concessions package, something like that, for just like putting in all that work. We can reward them with some delicious Toucan Kingdom food because the Toucan Kingdom has the best grub in the whole entire world. And don't you ever doubt it because... Gordon Ramsay himself said that this food was irresistible and that it could not be passed up. Everyone, all the famous people are coming to our theme park. I mean, why wouldn't you want to? It's a freaking theme park, okay? I mean, honestly, if you want to be the most popular person in the world, just like build a theme park and just like invite people for free. Be like, you yeah, want to come stay in my theme park for free? I'll give you like ride passes and like you can skip all the lines and yeah, you can make anybody your friend. Like, when Obama to be your friend, just invite him to come to your freaking theme park, man. I'm sure he would be very, very appreciative of that. You know, I don't, like, know very many people who have started theme parks. Like, whoever started Six Flags or Cedar Point or, like, any iconic theme parks, apart from, like, Walt Disney, I don't know who starts theme parks. I'm surprised that people who started them aren't more famous with how, like, freaking awesome they are. Or maybe it's not, like, one person. It's probably a collective group of people that all invest in it together. I could imagine that. It's not something you could just do yourself because the expenses are very, very high and for one person to have that kind of money, that'd be crazy. Yo, freaking Bill Gates or Jeff Bezos, I wish one of them would just be like, you know what, I want to dedicate my life towards theme parks. And they just made the best theme parks in the world and just invested all of their money into it. And whenever they die, their child opens up the will and Bill Gates' will is just like, I don't want my children to be willed any of my money. I went every single dime to go into theme parks, and then the world just gets transformed into a, a bunch of awesome theme parks. Could you imagine? And then I also decided to put a Bulbasaur, Blastoise, and Charizard in the entrance of the Poke Park as like a little centerpiece, because I wanted to have just like a little garden area with some trees and bushes and stuff, and I thought having just like the three main starters from Gen 1 would just be like a kind of cool iconic thing to have here in the center. And then we're just going to naturalize it and make it all look really pretty. And this is going to be what really brings this area together. And then once we just get all the stuff done, this area is going to be looking really nice. I have some really cool stuff in mind for across the road where the chairlift is. I think I'm going to put like a hotel there and another roller coaster. So that'll be like something we work on in the future because I just have a lot of decorating that we need to catch up on before we build any new coasters. So... Unfortunately, the coaster we built today is going to be the last coaster for a few more episodes until we finish the checklist. So the series is about to get boring again, I guess, unfortunately. But it's better to just, like, f finalize stuff and get it, like, completely finished. You, you dig? Also, as a big heads up, I'm actually going to be doing a live stream on YouTube this upcoming Tuesday at noon Pacific time, 3 p.m. Eastern time where I'm going to be playing the challenge mode to Planet Coaster, which is like sandbox mode, but you have money. So I'm going to be trying to build a theme park with finances and actually having to like budget and play the actual game and not just have infinite everything and not having to worry about it. So if you want to come hang out and chill while I try to build a theme park in challenge mode on Tuesday, um, you totally should. It'll be on my YouTube channel and it's going to be an awesome time, hopefully. I can't exactly promise that but I'm hoping it's an awesome time. It'll be, it'll be more awesome if you're there, so come help me make it an awesome time. <laughs> hey. All right, so I printed a bunch of benches, trash cans, and lamps around here, and that really helps just like bring this together and just like filling the paths up. The area's really looking nice, and I'm glad that I put all the trees and stuff here before the episode ends, because next time we come and look at it, it's just gonna look that much more beautiful, and I can't wait to just like finish up these buildings and this roller coaster and this whole entire area in general, and making videos for like all the rides and stuff. It's gonna be freaking sick. Today's comic question of the day is gonna be kind of interesting. If you were to build your own theme park and you had to choose a place geographically for that theme park to be built, where would you want to build your theme park? What piece of land would you choose and why? And keep things in mind like the amount of space you would have, the accessibility to people, like is it close to, like is it a good tourist destination? Got to be tactful on this one. I want to see what you guys are thinking and then <laughs> maybe I'll steal your guys' ideas and build theme parks in those locations some days when I'm rich and successful and I'm building my own theme parks all across the world. That's totally gonna happen. Yup. 
<laughs> Anyways, we are getting to the end of this video, but thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button. It means the world. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I don't know why you'd be so far into the series and I hit the subscribe button. Like, what's wrong with you? And I will see you guys in the next one. Take care. Make sure to brush your teeth. You nasties.